Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This video is going to be a lesson about the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is basically just a combination of the x-axis, which is a horizontal number line, with the y-axis, which is a vertical number line. Combining the x-axis and y-axis, we can plot the location of points in two dimensions. The horizontal number line tells us left and right, and the vertical number line tells us up and down. To represent the location of a point on a coordinate plane, we use these things called ordered pairs. In an ordered pair, x always comes first and y always comes second. If the value of x is positive, we move to the right on the number line, and if the value of x is negative, we move to the left. And if the value of y is positive, you move up on the y-axis, and if y is negative, we move down. Here's how to plot ordered pairs in three easy steps. Start at the origin. The origin is located at 0, 0. Here's where the origin is located, and it's where the x-axis and y-axis meet. Step 2, you're going to move either left or right along the x-axis, depending if x is positive, which is to the right, or if x is negative, move to the left. And in step 3, you're going to move either up or down along the y-axis, up if y is positive, and down if y is negative. As a real quick example, if you're trying to plot the point 4, negative 3, this is how we would do it. First, we're going to identify where the origin is, and this is just going to be 0, 0. Since x's value is positive 4, we're going to move to the right 4 units. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in step 3, we're going to move up or down. Since the y value is equal to negative 3, that means we're going to move down 3 units. Here, we're moving down 1, 2, and 3 units. This point right here would represent the location 4, negative 3. Don't worry, in a little bit I'll go through some more examples. Now notice how the x-axis and y-axis divide the whole coordinate plane into four sections. The first one we'll talk about is quadrant 1. Quadrant 1 is located in the top right and is used the most often. The reason why we use it the most is because x and y are both always positive here. Whether you're at 5, 3, 2, 7, or any other point in this quadrant, both values are going to be positive. To plot a point in quadrant 1, you'll always move to the right and move up. Now let's talk about quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, x is always negative and y is always positive. Notice how all these ordered pairs in quadrant 2 have a negative x value and a positive y value. To get to quadrant 2, you'll always move to the left and move up. Now let's take a look at quadrant 3. Notice how all the coordinates in quadrant 3 will have a negative x value and a negative y value. To get to quadrant 3, you'll always move to the left and then move down. And finally, let's look at quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, the x value is always going to be positive and the y value is always going to be negative. To get to quadrant 4, you always move to the right, then you move down. To remember the quadrants in order, you can draw a big C for correct. In order, they go quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, we're always going to start at the origin, then move left or right, and finally move up and down. Everything in quadrant 1 is going to be a positive value followed by a positive value. Everything in quadrant 2 is going to be a negative value followed by a positive value. Everything in quadrant 3 is going to have a negative value followed by a negative value. And every point in quadrant 4 is going to start off with a positive value, but end with a negative value. Now that we've gone over some vocabulary and background, let's do some math together. In example 1, we're going to practice plotting points and writing ordered pairs. Let's try plotting each of these points on the coordinate plane. Remember that each of these ordered pairs is going to be x, y. The x value is going to be telling us if we're moving left or right, and the y value is telling us if we're moving up or down. For point A, the 4 tells us that we're going to be moving 4 units to the right, which is a positive 4, then 2 units up, which is a positive 2. Here's where point A is located. We describe this as being in quadrant 1. Now let's look at point B. The x coordinate is negative 5, so we're going to move 5 to the left, and the positive 7 for the y coordinate means we're going to move up 7. After starting at the origin and moving 5 left and 7 up, we can locate where point B is. The location of point B is in quadrant 2. Pause the video now and try plotting the rest of these points down. Unpause when you're ready to check to see how you did. For point C, we should start at the origin and move 2 units to the left. Then we should move 9 units down. Point C is down here and is located in quadrant 3. To plot point D, we're going to move 4 units to the right and 5 units down. Here's point D. It's located in quadrant 4. And finally, let's plot point E. For point E, we're going to move 6 units to the left, and we're not going to move up or down because it says 0 units for the y coordinate. Here's point E. We describe the location of it as being on the y axis. Now that we've practiced plotting 5 points, I want you to find out what the ordered pairs or the locations of these 5 points. Pause the video and give it a try, and unpause it to see how you did. To plot point F, we're going to move 0 units left or right, but we're going to move 8 units up. F is located on the y-axis. To get to point G, you're going to have to move 3 units to the left, but then 2 units up. Point G is located in quadrant 2. For point H, we would start at the origin and move 8 units to the left, and then move 4 units down. Both these values are going to be negative. Point H is located in quadrant 3. 
To get to point I, we would start in the origin and move 3 units to the right, and then go 0 units up or down. Point I is located on the x-axis. And finally, to plot point J, we'll start on the origin and move 1 unit to the right, which is positive 1, and we'll move 7 units down, or negative 7. Point J is located in quadrant 4. Here in example 2, we're going to find the distance between two points. For this first example, let's say we have two points A and B. To first show these visually, I'm going to plot these on a coordinate plane. Here's points A and B on the coordinate plane. To find the distance between A and B, we can count the boxes between the points. Here we can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The distance between A and B is 9 units long. However, instead of counting all the way across, we could break it up into two smaller pieces. We can first find the distance of A to the y-axis, which is just going to be 4 units. Then we can find the distance of B to the y-axis, which is going to be 5 units. Adding these two distances up, we can get 9 total units. So what if we want to find a distance between two points, but we don't have graph paper? First, look at the ordered pairs and find either matching x values or matching y values. In this example, notice how the y values match. They both equal 6. If that's the case, we can use their x values to find the distance between these two points. Since negative 4 and positive 5 are on opposite sides of 0, we can take the absolute value of negative 4 and add it to the absolute value of 5. The absolute value of negative 4 is just going to be positive 4, and the absolute value of 5 is going to be positive 5. 4 plus 5 is going to be 9. We can say that points A and B are 9 units apart. Again, I'm going to show you them visually on a coordinate plane, but then I'm going to show you how to do it algebraically. Here's point C, and here's point D. To find a distance between them, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 units. Points C and D are 5 units apart. Let's see how we can figure this out using algebra instead of using a coordinate plane. So first, can you see if the x's or the y's are matching? In this example, it looks like the x's are matching because they're both 7. If that's the case, let's just focus on the y values. Since we can see that both y values are negative, we can actually subtract their absolute values to find their distance. We'll first start with a number that has a greater absolute value, and we'll subtract the number that has a smaller absolute value. The absolute value of negative 8 is just going to be 8, and the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be positive 3. Subtracting 8 minus 3, we're going to get 5. Points C and D are 5 units apart. Notice how in the top example we add their absolute values when the two points are in different quadrants. And if the points are in the same quadrant, we just subtract their absolute values, starting with the larger absolute value first, and the smaller absolute value second. Now it's your turn. Try finding the distance between points E and F. You should try doing it on the coordinate plane, but also try doing it algebraically using absolute values. Pause the video and give it a try. This time I'm going to show you how to do it algebraically with absolute values, then I'll confirm it on the coordinate plane. First, notice that we have matching x values here. If that's the case, we just want to focus on looking at the y values. Looking at these two y values, you should be asking yourself if they're on the same side of 0 or on different sides of 0. Since they're on different sides of 0, we're going to add their absolute values together. The absolute value of negative 4 is going to be positive 4, and the absolute value of 7 is going to be positive 7. Adding 4 plus 7 together, we get 11. Points E and F are 11 units apart. Let's confirm this on a coordinate plane now. First, we can plot our points E and F. And here we can see that they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 units apart. Instead of counting all 11 units one by one, a little smarter strategy would be to find the distance E is from zero, which is going to be four units, that's the absolute value, and finding the distance of F to zero, which is over here and is going to be seven units. Hopefully it makes sense why we add their absolute values seven plus four to get 11 total units apart. Let's try one more together here. We're gonna find the distance between point G and point H. In this example, notice how their Y values match because they're both negative eight and a half. Because of that, we're just going to focus on looking at their x values. Since they're both positive, we're going to subtract their absolute values. Since we know that 7.5 has a larger absolute value, we'll write that one first and subtract the absolute value of 3.5 because that one's smaller. 7.5 is 7.5 units away from 0, and 3.5 is 3.5 units away from 0. Subtracting these two values, 7.5 minus 3.5 is just 4. Points G and H should be 4 units apart. Now let's confirm it on a coordinate plane to double check. Here you can see I plotted G and H, and these points are 1, 
two, three, and four units apart. The line segment from G to H is four units long. And that concludes the first part of our video on coordinate planes. Stay tuned for part two.